everybody. I thought I would vlog today um, because it is a snow day here in Chicago. Well, Chicago area. And uh, like everybody's, everything's closed. Offices are closed, schools are closed. And it is so cold here that it's apparently, according to the internet, it's like colder than Antarctica or something. We are ridiculously cold. Let me show you what my weather app says. Okay, I'm gonna try and cover up the name of my town just for privacy sake, I guess, but uh, it's negative 13 here right now. Negative 13. So this is what it's been like this morning. And it was a little bit colder overnight, I think. And then as we get later and later overnight, we're into tomorrow. I mean, negative 25, but right now it's negative 13. So it is just freezing. I know this is probably bad lighting, um, but I just wanted to show you there's literally ice on the inside of our windows. And there's ice. Is this on the inside? No, there, this ice isn't on the inside. It's like on the middle, kind of, if that makes sense. So it's not like in the house, but it's in between the doors. So um, yeah, like everything is freezing up big time. So I'm home. Um, I'm not going anywhere today. I don't like driving in the snow and I am definitely not driving in negative 13 degree weather and my husband's home from work. He's just gonna be working from home today. So um, now I'm gonna have some breakfast cause I'm, we slept in, I'm up, you know, late, off to a late start, but that's okay. So I'm gonna have my breakfast. So lately this is what I've been doing. This is like my favorite breakfast ever, I think. So, well, if I put bananas, it would be slightly better. But, um, so I'm using yogurt and normally I don't, eat yogurt for two reasons. One is the dairy isn't good for my skin. It kind of breaks me out, but I love it. Um, like I love yogurt so much, but the second reason is because it's full of sugar. Like there's so much sugar in yogurt typically, but this stuff's called too good. It's by light and fit and it's got two grams of sugar. And I thought that was so much more reasonable than other yogurts. So I eat this now. I just, I'm in a phase where I'm back onto yogurt. So I have this yogurt, any flavor, it doesn't really matter. And I put fresh blueberries with it and um, some granola, which has plenty of sugar in it. But I'm just trying to be like more mindful, not cut out sugar altogether, just trying to be a little more careful. So this is the kind that I like the most right now. And then I also put some of these sliced almonds from Trader Joe's, which I'm almost out of. And I mix all that together in my yogurt and that's breakfast. I'm setting up my base of operations here on the couch. So I am just gonna watch Kathy Lee and Hoda for a little bit. And I've got my nice warm blanket, got my phone, iPad, breakfast, and I've got my little buddy with me because he loves to look out the window. So every day I open up the blinds for that window so he can look outside, right? Is that right? Is it nice and warm over here too? Hi, Bug. Good morning. I've got to pull the bed together. Hi, yes, did I spook you? I'm sorry. There's a baby in the bed. We've gotta make the bed. We didn't do that yet. Hi, little kitten love. You're resting? Yeah. You like mommy's nails? So I put on this nail polish last night uh, from Essie. And I don't normally wear a lot of blue nail polish, but I thought this would be kind of fun and pretty considering it's like a snowy, freezing cold day. So I thought that was kind of snowish or something. Hi. Uh oh. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Yep. Is that your camera? Oh, good. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh my gosh, our washing machine is so loud. But I have um, the laundry going and now I'm gonna go start some sugar cookies because I made sugar cookie dough yesterday and I need to still like roll them out and use my cookie cutter so that's what we're gonna do now okay I'm gonna put flour down on my board and this is supposed to be a no spread sugar cookie recipe so I'm hoping that's the case oh I forgot my rolling pin I'm hoping that's the case, that it doesn't spread a lot when it bakes because you want it to hold its shape, so. Oh, I put the dough in the fridge and now 
It is very hard. I might need to let this dough warm up a little bit because it is solid. Yeah, at this temperature, I don't see how they would spread at all. Now, I wasn't supposed to, well, okay, not that I wasn't supposed to, but you didn't have to refrigerate the dough, but I did overnight just because I wasn't ready to make the cookies yesterday. So, I figured it would be fine, but I might have to give it a little time. I don't know. I'm going to try and work with it. Okay, I don't think my thickness is perfect. I, I really don't ever know how thin or thick to make my sugar cookies. But I'm going to try that. Okay. Okay, what shape should I do first? I got out just a couple of cookie cutters. So I've got a little snowflake. I think I'll do that first. I wanted something wintry. Oh boy, that's thick. Or at least really firm. Gentle. Hey, that looks pretty good. I also have a little winter hat. I think it's supposed to be Santa's hat, but we're just going to call it a winter hat. And then I can decorate it any way I want. Because that's part of what I'm hoping to do today is decorate these cookies. Sorry, that obnoxiously loud clicking and startup thing is my um, very old and wonky oven. But I'm hoping to decorate these cookies today um, because I'd like to start practicing how I ice cookies so that I do a little bit better. I don't know, it's just not something that I'm good at. And I would like to try and get a little bit better at it. And I've got some icing that I made yesterday. So I'm going to try it. Okay, here they are for my first pan. I'm going to put them in the oven, but i got to look up how long to bake them for. Okay. So while the cookies finish up baking, I'm going to make some coffee. So I've heated up my coffee. And then I'm using um, flax milk. And this new creamer I found, well, it's new for me. I just found it at the grocery store and protein MCT oil, it says it has zero grams of sugar. And it's crazy because it's vanilla flavored, like it's actually really sweet. So, oh, that's the cookie timer, hold on. I'm kind of curious as to what, I didn't really look. What's the sugar in here? Monk fruit, natural flavor, natural flavor. I don't know, but it's like way sweeter than you'd think and it has none of this stuff. So it's supposed to be like a healthier creamer alternative to the stuff I usually use, which has more sugar in it. And it is very sweet, so I like it. So I've been putting some uh, flax milk and some of the creamer in here, and then I just kind of fluff it up. Add a little air to it with my little mis whisk mixer, mixer whisk. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to say there. Um, just this guy. And I don't know, it's not necessary. It's certainly not necessary. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. And now I'm going to pour this into my coffee and it makes it really pretty. I like how it, I like how it kind of sinks down into the coffee after a minute. Oh boy. Don't drip. Okay. And there it goes. We're going up. We gotta switch around the laundry. Wanna get a handle on that. So, so let's do it. So this is just the load of uh, bed sheets and some hand towels. Everything is white so I was able to bleach this load. I like to do that from time to time. Um, I don't always bleach our bed sheets and every single little white hand towel but um, sometimes I like to so this week I felt like doing that. Oop. So that's it. You okay. want to unbox it? Or? No. We'll just open it. So we got Kingdom Hearts 3 for the PlayStation 4. I'm very, very, very excited. I've not played these games in a long time. We've been waiting for Kingdom Hearts 3 to come out for like a decade. Yeah, I think it has been. Yeah, I think it has. So we're going to open it, take the plastic off, and put it in the PS4 because you said it has to download. Yeah, what exactly does it have to download, though? There's a prologue and an epilogue. And... Why aren't those on the game? I don't know. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna try and open up these cards that it came with. This wasn't even the 
Um, they had the regular version, and they had the deluxe version, and the deluxe version of the game came with, I don't know, some kind of, I don't know, steel book or, right, was it a book or? Steel case. Steel case. And some pins. Yeah, that's right, there was a pin. And an art book. And an art book. But it was an extra 20 bucks, so no thanks. So this one came with these cards. Hmm. Um, well, spoiler alert. Now we know some of the worlds, and I was trying to avoid spoilers. Went, went. Now I know. Okay, baby bear, what do you want to do? So while the um, game's doing its thing on the PlayStation, I'm not even sure if I'm going to play yet because I kind of wanted to play with my sisters, so we'll see. But little bear and I are going to hang out for a bit. So the clothes are in the dryer. I'm all caught up on the dishes. The cookies are cooling, and they have to cool for, like, I want them to be, like, extra cool. You know, I want to give it a couple hours before I work on icing them. And um, I have my bag of pita chips. I discovered these recently. They're ridiculously amazing. They're so, so good. So I have these because I'm going to be snacking. And I'm going to watch a YouTube video. Oh, maybe I should actually point the camera at the video. It's from this channel. Let me pull it up. Who I love, love, love. They're so cute. Um, it's called See You Real Soon. And they're Joe and Ashley and their little baby Lee. And every week they put a video up of um, the a trip to Disney. So they've got a new video just they put up today. So I'm really excited. Because I love them and they're just a lot of fun. And I like seeing when they take their little baby to Disney World. Oh, we're getting text message. That's okay. Hi, baby bear. I put this blanket out, real soft Hello Kitty blanket, because um, he, well, both of our cats like soft blankets. But I wanted to make sure he had a warm blanket on to lay on today. And he seems to like it. Yeah, you're laying on the blanket Mama put out for you. You smart guy. You smart guy. Oh my goodness, we better go check the phone. Okay, so I have a little setup here. I'm ready to try and decorate my cookies. So I think they got a little overcooked because some of them have brown edges. So they shouldn't have cooked for that long, but I didn't know, I was trying. And I'm trying a new trick that I saw on Pinterest. So this is hopefully, we'll see, supposed to be my thicker icing for like borders. And you put it, like a couple of scoops of it in saran wrap, and then you put that in your piping bag so that your piping bag, you know, you can just like, then you don't have to clean out your piping bag every time. I don't know, it's just supposed to be like some kind of trick that's a little bit easier. And then if you wanna add more stuff to it, it's um, less of a mess because you can just put more in the saran wrap tied up again and shove it back in there. So I'm gonna see, I've pulled the saran wrap through and the icing is coming out there, so I just need to snip that and then put the tip on, and hopefully that'll work. So I've got my outside, like, border thicker icing for it, um, in white, blue, and pink. So I'm going to start with those, and then I'm going to go back and try um, seeing what kind of shape my thinner icing is in for flooding, they call it. I'm still learning all this. This is a number three, which a lot of times... Okay, I shouldn't say a lot. I've only started decorating cookies, like practicing decorating cookies a couple times recently. Um, I still feel like this number three sized tip is too big, I guess. It's like, I want something a little bit thinner, but not too thin. So I don't know, this three is just, sometimes it's too big for what I need. Okay, that feels pretty secure. So which cookie should I try first? And let me say this too that these cookies are not so much for eating as just for decorating. So, so put that out there. I do not plan to eat all these. The last cookies I decorated, we only ate maybe a couple of them total and then they were just to like admire for practice. So, okay. Let me see. Ooh, that's too much. This doesn't seem thick enough. Well, I'm trying, like I said. I'm... 
new to decorating cookies. But I think this consistency of icing is just a little, it's a little too watery, which is weird because when I was whipping it up, it looked really thick. And now that I'm using it, it does not seem very thick at all. Like not, I don't know what it's stiff. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Like I want it to be stiffer. Cause I feel like that might get soupy. I don't know. I see so many cool looking cookies and nicely decorated cookies by professionals on Pinterest. And then I get all these big ideas. I'm like, oh, I could totally decorate cookies. I want to try that. I want to practice so I could be good like they are. And um, my cookies look nothing like theirs. My icing doesn't look like theirs. Obviously the finished product doesn't look like theirs. So I don't know. I think it's just possibly you need a more artistic eye and also a lot of practice, which I haven't done yet but I'm gonna work on it. Okay, I was at first <laughs> with this pink icing on the heart, I was like, okay, I've lost my marbles, but because this is like so much thicker um, than the last ones, but this is a size five tip, not a size three. So it is a little bit bigger. It's not just my imagination. Okay, lesson learned. This icing is not for borders really because if it held its shape, then it would do the design for this tip, and it is not. Not at all. Ugh, it's so frustrating. We're going outside. I wanna check on the weather. I think the camera's perfect. Oh, that sounds good. I wanna feel this ridiculously cold weather. I don't know about you, but I want to. I think it's up to negative five now. Yeah. yeah. I just want to feel what negative five feels like. Ooh, animal tracks. Somebody was coming through here last night. This is not even the fun snow. This isn't like light and powdery. This is really hard and icy. I'm all bundled. My husband is less bundled. We are not gonna be out here long. I just wanted to see what all the fuss was about and if I could handle it for very long. No, I cannot. Maybe we should get the mail. The mail before we go in. Mail. Yeah, I'll get it if you want, I got the boots on. That's it, I just wanted some fresh air because we went out last night, but I knew that we'd be cooped up in the house like all day today. So. I just want fresh air of some kind rather than no fresh air at all. Oh wait, there is no mail today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I forgot that the post office is not even delivering mail. That's how cold it is. I'm sorry, and I just made you go check for nothing. Boy, it's cold. Like this is ugly. Like I would not I would not come out to do anything. Really, like go anywhere. I don't like it's that bad right now. Give it five minutes and you'll have frostbite or whatever it is and you'll lose your nose or something. Wrap a scarf around your face and you find it. <laughs> okay. This is this is why I'm going to Florida. I'm gonna live in Florida because I have I have no tolerance and patience for this. None. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, that's enough of the negative five for me. We're going in. Here are all the cookies after they've had kinda like round one, I guess, of uh, icing. And I am not a big fan of this recipe. In terms of the icing, the cookies are fine, but this, they did not exactly turn out the way I wanted, but that's why I'm learning and experimenting with different recipes. And if this chair creaks anymore that I'm sitting on, I, I'm afraid it's gonna break. Um, so now I have my icing ready for flooding. This is a thinner icing that I made, but I can already tell you right now, I don't like the texture because it's very much like this, which it's like really, puffy and foamy and look at all those air bubbles. I don't understand why this is all so foamy. So I'm gonna try it though. There, there's my first cookie. This is so puffy. It has so many air bubbles in it. I just don't think it's right. Mm. 
I have to show this world's cutest sprinkles container. I found this mix. It's just called Mix Sprinkles from Walmart. It was only like, I don't know, maybe four bucks for this whole thing of sprinkles. Look how cute this mix is. There's little stars and I love the colors so much. So I'm going to try and incorporate them into some of my cookies. Um, I don't know if they're going to match or look nice, but they're really fun. So I just want to use them. These are by no means beautiful cookies. This was so much harder than I thought that it was going to be. I mean, you see all these beautiful cookies online and they look amazing and like they'd be easy to do, but they're so hard and I hate this icing recipe. I hate it. I'm throwing this away. I'm unpinning it. I'm never using it again because look how frothy this is. That is not right. Not right at all. And anytime like anything comes near or you slightly nudge it or I can touch the very outside of a cookie, it totally pulls up all of the edges and everything, even though the, like the outside edges that I did, I did hours ago. So I don't know. I mean, it was fun to try and I have a couple that I think turned out cute. Like that one's cute. Um, that one's kind of cute. I like the little hat. My poor snowman's got some kind of demon eyes going on because that didn't work out. That's kind of cute. That one's kind of cute. So, I mean, they're not all super ugly, but these are by no means beautiful or <laughs> what I'm as good as I'm ever hope I ever hope to get. I hope to get a lot better at this, but. Okay, since the cookies were kind of a bust, I want to show you something a little bit cuter. Well, a lot cuter, at least I think so. So this is, I know it's past Christmas, but it's still winter. It's still snowy outside. So this is my setup that I had for like my Christmas and winter decorations, minus the giant telescope in the back, please ignore that. But uh, these uh, gingerbread house pictures are from Hobby Lobby. So I put two on the side of our mirror. And then I have a sign that says gingerbread street. And I have a bunch of different little gingerbread houses that I have found from either Hobby Lobby or Michael's and a gingerbread house that my sister made more houses, a gingerbread house that I made, and then more really cute houses. Oh, and this little one was, I think the most inexpensive because it's just a little wood guy that came from Target. And then on this side of our mirror, I have a big picture from Hobby Lobby. I just thought they're really cute. And I think it's a really cute little setup. Um, so I know it's, it's past Christmas and everything, and this is, it feels kind of Christmassy to me, but if it's still winter, I'm gonna leave these out at least until a little bit before Valentine's Day. Hi, I guess I could talk <laughs> this way. Um, I'm gonna leave them out until closer to Valentine's Day because when I take these down, then I will put my Valentine's Day decorations up here. So for now, while it's still extra freezing and snowy out, the gingerbread houses stay. Oh boy. Okay, I even though I made footprints in the backyard, I just wanna admire this freezing cold evening through the screen. I'm not even gonna open up the screen because that just, oh yeah, there's snow there, but a nice evening and it, it looks pretty out probably not so pretty through the screen wait let me try this there that's a little bit nicer the sun's going down now and uh, just really quiet around our neighborhood and I like it so I guess if there's a silver lining to this really crummy weather um, and the ice literally inside our windows it's that it's pretty out sort of and nice and calm and everybody's in their homes and yeah that's it it's time for dinner and dessert well i'm making dinner dinner's over in the oven i have salmon in the oven right now but i'm also making dessert because it's wednesday and wednesday is dessert night so we've been trying to cut back on junk food and it's going fairly well um so we let ourselves have like two cheat meals a week and that includes dinner and dessert I don't care so much about the cheat meal part, so I'm okay having a healthy-ish meal, like we're having salmon and veggies tonight. Um, it's the dessert, the dessert that really like gets me. So it's a very big deal since I'm only having like two desserts a week pretty much. So I'm making, we're gonna try to make lava cakes for tonight. And um, I've already opened up my Ghirardelli baking chips. They're a little bittersweet. They're like flat chocolate chips. They're so good, I just keep eating them on their own. I haven't gotten to the cake part yet. I'm just eating these because I'm eating less junk food, therefore eating less chocolate. So by the time Wednesday, um, it's usually, did I mention that usually it's like Wednesday and Saturday, we've been doing our cheat meals and desserts. I mean, by the time Wednesday rolls around and by the time Saturday rolls around, I am desperate and dying for a dessert. 
and for like real good chocolate. So I am eating the chocolate chips. I mean, it's an appetizer apparently, but I'm gonna start putting together these lava cakes. The recipe sounds really good. I'm hoping it turns out good, but I made lava cakes once months ago and they were terrible. They did not turn out at all. So this is a new recipe that I'm hoping works out. All right, as I'm working on dinner, I'm just going to talk. So um, I have started watching The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which is on Amazon Prime. And the girl who plays Mrs. Maisel, or Miriam, or Midge, I guess is the nickname for Miriam, was back in the day. Um, she just won, I don't know, an Oscar, I don't think, but something, she won something. Uh, so it's like obviously a really popular show and I'm just now getting on the bandwagon for it. It is funny and it's got some frustrating moments, but it's not anything that's like scary or, oh, not gross, but it has some adult moments in it. Um, so it's something I can handle because I don't really like to watch a whole lot of depressing stuff. So it's definitely more on the lighthearted side and it's funny. So I'm on episode four, about halfway through, and I think I'm gonna stick with it because I'm liking it so far. And um, I wanna see what happens to Midge. And I don't know, if you don't know, I don't know if this is really much of a spoiler, but like her husband leaves her. And so she's trying to figure out what she's gonna do with her life. And she wants to do stand-up comedy and she's trying to figure that out. So, so far so good. I've also watched the show You, which is on Netflix. It started off on Lifetime, but then it got moved to Netflix. And it's just one season, but they are going to pick it up for a second season. It's about this like super creepy stalker guy <clears throat> and um, like the girl that he's stalking and their relationship and stuff. And that one kept me on the edge of my seat so bad. That was definitely a binge because I like had to find out what's happening. Like I had to know what happens next. It was like spooky and creepy and um, it was good. It had some blood in it, so be careful. And also definitely some beyond rated R things, I think, but um, that's a really good one. I also, okay, another total binge watch was from um, like a streaming service called Sundance Now. I'd never heard of it until I saw a Facebook ad for it. I checked it out because I saw it on the Facebook ad because they were advertising a show called A Discovery of Witches, which is based off of some books that I had seen. I've never read them, but I saw them and they've been like on my radar of books to possibly read one day. So it's a series of books, I think it's a trilogy, and they've made, I don't know how many of the books are constitute the show, but the show has one season, total binge watch because it was so good. So I signed up for Sundance now, at least for the free trial. I'll see if we're gonna, we'll probably keep it a little bit longer, do a couple months of it, but they do have a free trial in case you wanna binge watch any of the shows in like a week. Um, a Discovery of Witches was also so good. It's like about magic and this girl who's a witch, but she doesn't, kind of want to be a witch and the vampire guy that she meets and all these things that happen and it just it's really good and it was really catchy like I I again wanted to like keep finding out what happens um but it's definitely no it's not a funny show it's just it's more serious and drama but it's like I don't know kind of fantasy-ish really it was really good I'm kind of a tv nut I like to watch a lot of tv and different shows and stuff well not different is in a big variety. I just like to watch TV and I tend to watch the same stuff over and over. So I'm trying to branch out a little bit with these new shows. So anywho, um, back to dinner. There we go. Um, this will be my husband's, this will be mine and that's it. Super easy. Okay. I've made a huge mess, but the mixture for the lava cakes is done. So this was the chocolate and the butter and then eggs, um, flour, salt, powdered sugar, and vanilla, and I think that's it. I think that's all I put in. These are the ramekins I'm using. They are probably my favorite ramekins that I have because they're pink, obviously, and they're hearts, and I love them. So I have a set of two. I also have round pink ramekins and um, red heart ones, I think, too. But these are my favorite, so I'm gonna use these. And I know it's a little early to get into a um, Valentine's Day kind of a spirit, but oh well, I'm gonna use them. I have them and I love them, so I'm gonna use them. Okay, I'm gonna try about that full. Boy, that gets heavy quick. 
I'd like to think that it's a lot, that it's like a really big lava cake and it's gonna be super filling, but with how desperate I am for chocolate and for dessert, this will be no problem. I'll eat the whole thing with no problem. They're all full. And now it says you put them on a pan or something, baking dish, something. Pop them in the oven for 18 to 20 minutes at 400 degrees. I have a big old mess to clean up. Big mess. So in the meantime, while, while the lava cakes are in the oven, I'm gonna switch out my cookies. So these cookies are ones that I practiced icing um, actually like two weeks ago. And again, they're not for eating. At, like when I first made them, we ate like a couple of them, but it was more about practicing, like trying to make icing colors and um, you know, just trying to decorate them. So these are, well, you can see there's a wonky looking mini and a wonky looking Mickey, some little Minnie Mouse bows. Um, but then there's characters from Bob's Burgers and I don't know. I mean, they're not perfect by any means. I mean, look at her eyes. I mean, come on. But I really think they're cute. And for somebody who is not creative at this stuff and had not decorated cookies in a while and doesn't do this on a regular basis, I think they turned out pretty good. So anyway, there's Tina. There's Linda. Those are actually more eyes. Linda, more accurate eyes. Linda's eyes are not supposed to take up the entire glasses. There's Jean. There's Bob. And I think the Bobs probably came out the best. And then there's Louise. So now I'm going to throw them away because they're a couple weeks old. And I've looked at them long enough. And now I'm going to put the cookies that I iced today out on here. Voila. They're all under there except for one that I'm deciding to eat because... Apparently lava cake's not enough dessert for me. So I think it's kind of nice. So I'll leave it here and then sometimes I move it over to our island just to, you know, mix things up and then I can look at all the cute cookies. Oh boy, they look so cute. Look how nice the little hearts look. Um, I think that's okay. They're really hot. I think that's okay. I think firmness wise, they're okay. And now you let them sit, it says for like two minutes. We're gonna work on how to take this thing out and flip it over. I'm really, really worried. <laughs> well, no. Your gloves are so grippy. You're grippy. Now put that down for a second. I'll tell you what to do. Now you put the plate over. Apparently our bowl still have a tag on the bottom. Okay. Ready? Yes, and now flip. Mmm. Mmm, I'm nervous. <laughs> wow. It does look good. It looks really cute and heartish. Whoa, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna stop messing with it. Look at the setup I have. Now, first of all, let's look at my deflated lava cake, which is lava-ing uh, severely. And I hope it tastes okay and that it's not too undercooked. But, I mean, all in all, not bad. Like, I'm just gonna relax with my lava cake and my ice cream, and my Hello Kitty slippers. And watch Mrs. Maisel. Will you be watching with me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, we're just gonna hang out and have our dessert. Okay, I'm in the bathroom now because I'm gonna get ready to do a face mask and wash my face and everything and get ready for bed. I'm a really big talker though, let me just tell you. I thought for sure that that um, lava cake would be no problem. I was a big talker. Like I could polish off the whole thing no problem because that's how desperate I was feeling for chocolate and for dessert. And mm, I did not finish that thing. It was so big, my stomach got upset. I, no, I ate probably about half, maybe a little over half of it and I was done. It filled me up so fast and I am like a chocoholic. Like I rarely meet a dessert or anything chocolate that's too much for me, that's too rich, that I can't finish the entire thing. Uh, I, I, I couldn't do it. It was just too much. I am full and my stomach was not happy. But let me say this, that the recipe that I found for this lava cake on Pinterest was so good. I tried a recipe for months before um, that I had found on there and I don't know why, but it did not work for some reason. It, it didn't work out for me at all. The consistency was wrong. The taste was wrong. It was really gross. I might pop a little picture up here of the recipe that I found. So just in case you're wondering for a lava cake recipe that's actually really good and works and has the right taste and consistency. Um, I really, really liked it. Yeah, it's tough. It's really tough not eating junk food every day. And it's very, very hard exercising even a couple times a week.
it's very hard and I hate it. And I've been in a slump since the weekend. I've had zero motivation to exercise. I have, but all I will do is like a half an hour of Pilates exactly. And then I'm done because I hate it so much. It's not the Pilates itself that I hate. It's just exercise. So I'm between trying to eat better and trying to exercise. My motivation is shaky right now. So, okay, now I'm done chatting about that, but I'm in the bathroom because I wanted to um, start winding down, get ready for bed. Of course, now I'm all hyped up on sure. So good luck falling asleep, but I'm going to um, wash my face. I have to take off my mascara. I, I put on mascara for the video today and um, a little bit of concealer also. So I'm going to wash my face, take that off, and then I'm gonna try this face mask, which looks super weird, but I found this at Sephora and it's called, well, it's by Dr. Jart and it's a shake and shot rubber firming mask. Wait, that way. Doesn't that sound super weird? Like, I feel like I've seen what this looks like before when I watch YouTube videos about like different kinds of facials. Like I have a, an idea of what this is gonna look like on my face, but not this specific one. I mean, it. It just couldn't be any creepier. That is the creepiest thing. Who comes up with this? Who, like who said it's a really good idea to put a creepy little face? It reminds me of like a little baby face. And then out comes the straw, like bizarro, bizarro. But we're gonna try this one. Rubber firming mask. I don't know if there's, diff they had different colors. It just says instant firming boost. That's all I know. So. Um, I'm gonna take out my earrings, wash my face, and get started. Okay, my eye makeup is off, and uh, I still need to wash my face though, but I really like these All May eye makeup remover, little um, round circles. And uh, this is not the oil-free one, but I really like this because they work really well. So that's what I use for my eye makeup remover. And then I'm going to be doing, um, sorry, that eye makeup remover is always like, it clings to my lashes so much until I actually wash my face. So I'm going to be washing my face twice because I've been hearing online how important it is to do like a double cleanse on your face. So the first thing I'm going to use is Clean It Zero. It's a cleansing balm. Sorry if my computer's being really loud. It's back there being very loud. Um, so it comes with a little scooper and then it's solid. So it doesn't like liquefy or warm up until you put it in your hands and rub it on your face, which you're supposed to do while your skin is dry. And then you add water to your face and it gets not bubbly, but I don't know the right word, emulsifies? I don't know, but it does not get all big, and like bubbly and frothy and foamy. So um, this I like, I, I haven't had it long. You can see if I really have only used it a couple days because I've only had it a couple days, but I like it so far. And then after I do the cleansing balm, I'm going to use this Paula's Choice um, Pore Normalizing Cleanser. It's for pimples, and I have pimples. Okay, time for the face mask. Oh, the straw is the little mixer thingy. Well, that's weird and cool. Oh, they call it a spatula. Okay, so you open it and remove the spatula from the lid. Then you combine both the super booster and the liquid ampule in the cup. Okay. Hmm. It's just white and jellyish. So hopefully I'm not gonna make a huge mess. But with most things I, I do make a huge mess. And it's also not easy at all to squeeze out of here. Okay. Ooh, some just flew on the floor. Oops. <gasps> Don't splash on my phone. It almost got my phone. Now you take the cup, I mean the lid, on the cup, and you use your finger to cover the hole, not weird at all, and you shake it. I'm not sure for how long. Let me check the directions. Shake well until fully mixed. You. And now you use the spatula to put it on your face. And you need to do that within the first two or three minutes. And I need to get my mirror. Hold on. So I'm going to try this. Seems very odd. Apply it with the spatula. 
I might just need to use my fingers. Oh, that's a little chilly. Oh, it feels nice though. Okay. But this really doesn't make a whole lot of product. Like this doesn't feel like, it, it doesn't look like it's giving me a whole lot of extra to work with. Do I look crazy yet? Because I feel a little crazy. So I'm supposed to leave this on for how long? Um, leave on for 15 to 20 minutes and then starting from the edges, gently peel off the mask and then like wash off any more after that. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna film on my computer for a few minutes while I wait. Okay, it's been a little over 15 minutes. So I'm gonna take this off now because I keep like needing to itch. Like I get, I'm itchy and I don't, it's not like an allergic thing. Like I don't think I'm reacting to the mask. It's just how it's tightening on my face that it makes a bunch of little itchy spots and I can't stand it. So I'm gonna take it off. Um, it feels tight a little bit, not as tight as one of those like clay masks would, but um, definitely it has snugged up. And if you touch it, I mean, it's, it feels cold and rubbery, like it's not gonna move super easy, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, can't just like wipe it off real easy. And it says you're supposed to peel from the sides. Can this stuff go down the drain? I assume it's okay. Oh, ew. Oh, look how weird. Oh, <gasps> weird, but kind of cool. I'm just rolling it off my face. Oh. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna put it in the garbage and set it on the sink. Sorry for that loud noise again. It's my laptop it's sitting on the counter. My laptop fan sounds like an airplane's taking off. Yeah, it sounds like an airplane. I don't know why it gets so worked up, but it does that all the time. Ooh, I think I'm gonna have to rinse my face after this. It's not hard, I'm not fighting with it, it just, it doesn't just roll or peel off in one piece, so it's gonna it's gonna take you a minute here. <laughs> I know it's not gross. It's just the idea that it looks like I'm peeling my skin off. It's a little icky. Oh, I feel so much better now. I can scratch my face. That took a little more effort than I would have liked, and like I had to get out the Clarisonic brush to get all that off, and it was like stuck. It kind of in my hair and I so I had to like wipe all in my hairline and yeah okay to be fair my I liked how it makes my skin feel um I don't know, like tightened up it does feel tightened up a little bit and my skin is also feeling pretty smooth um or at least soft I mean um would I buy that again though considering it cost like 12 or so dollars for that silly mask but I used a coupon though from Sephora. I'm pretty sure I got that with um, when they were having their coupon or you know uh, whatever the sale is like before Christmas. So oh poop I forgot they wanted Palm my exfoliator. Oh man. Oh well anyway we'll do that tomorrow. Um, would I buy that again? Uh, even with the coupon code I'm not really sure. So just keeping that in mind. I mean I liked it. It seemed much expensive for what it is. And I've got my SK2, which is this stuff. Hold on, or else I just cannot see what I'm even looking at and doing. Um, so I'm using this, it's like face essence, and it's supposed to be some big fancy, well it is a big fancy uh, face essence because the price was ridiculously over the top fancy. But, um, and normally I would never ever spend what this cost, however, I got it from Costco and I'm a Costco member, so I was able to get it online for, from Costco. Like I did the per ounce comparison of what buying this large size would be and uh, rather than like in comparison to a smaller bottle. So per ounce cost wise getting the big bottle was better. This was also at Costco cheaper than this exact same size from Sephora and like a nice chunk of change cheaper and Costco also had um, cash back through Ebates. So I took all of it into consideration and got it because um, of all those things I really wanted to try because I've been hearing about it for a long time but would never pull the trigger because it's so expensive. So I'm not sure at, 
I mean, you can see how much I've used. Sometimes use it once a day, sometimes use it twice a day. I'm not sure if this is any great miracle breakthrough product for my skin. So after using this much, the jury is out on whether this is doing anything at all for me. I'm honestly not sure if it's worth it. So I have it. I'm going to use every single last drop of that entire bottle because it cost a fortune. Then I'm going to use this new product that I got called Snail Bee Ultimate Serum. I think the company is called Benton. So that'll go on next because you're supposed to put your products on in order of um, like lightest consistency like or the thinnest product to the thickest I think so I have that and you're supposed to be you're supposed to press stuff in that's like the thing to do also it was press but sometimes I don't feel like pressing stuff in so I'll rub it in and I'm honestly not too worried about it okay so this product is from um, a website called Soko Glam you might be able to get it other places but I found it on Soko Glam S-O-K-O. And I also found that zero um, cleansing oil balm stuff that I use to wash my face with from Soko Glam. So they are all um, Korean skincare products. And it's so much cool stuff. Like they have a YouTube channel that I really recommend you check out because even if you don't know a lot about skincare, like I don't know a lot about it. I'm um, certainly not an expert or anything. And I have very troublesome skin, but I really like to like watch videos about facials and skincare and stuff like that. So anyway, um, I really recommend you check out Soko Glam's YouTube channel because it's cool and like every single month they have a new video about their latest products that they have found and that they're like selling on their website. So I like it a lot. It's And it's all Korean skincare, so they have kind of a different perspective on some things and about like, you know, the, using essences, which I hadn't really heard of before I learned about Korean skincare and um, you know, like patting stuff into your skin. And they use a lot of things like um, that typically I felt like I wasn't hearing about before. For example, snail stuff, anything with snails, they're big on stuff with snails. So I think that's kind of cool. And I'm just, I'm not entirely sure, you know, again, this is still new for me. I'm not entirely sure if it's anything fantastic, but I'm gonna try it. The last step for tonight is this Estee Lauder Perfectionist CP Plus R Wrinkle Lifting Firming Serum. This I've had for a little while. Um, oh, and you can see hopefully how much I've used up. I really like, it's a pleasant smell, but that means it is scented, which isn't always the best. Um, and also it leaves your skin feeling very soft. It has a very soft finish. Um, a little does not go a long way. It is fairly thick and doesn't spread super well or super easily. Um, this had good reviews, I think, on Sephora. That's where I got it from. I had good reviews, but I'm not really, again, not really sure if it's anything great. I mean, I have all these products, and I like to try and use them on a regular basis or at least a regular rotating basis. So, I mean, at some point... Like, when do I have too much? And then I don't know if something's working because I don't use it often enough to know if it's working. So then why would I repurchase it? So I'm trying to figure this whole thing out between aging, which is tough, and uh, acne, which is probably the toughest because I'm, am I 33? Oh yeah, I'm 33 now. Because I'm 33 and I still have acne. And I've had acne since early-ish to mid-teens. So we're going on two solid decades of acne and I'd, I'd really like to be done with acne, but apparently it's never going to happen. So between like the aging that's happening on my skin and my constant everyday, apparently for my entire life breakouts, I'm trying to find products that aren't going to upset my acne, but are going to help me with, um, you know, just like little lines and the wrinkles and the huge cratery wrinkles that are in my forehead. Yeah. While not breaking me out or making my skin go crazy so okay last two products of the night and then I promise I will let you go and end this vlog and stop yammering so um I'm gonna wait till after I floss and brush my teeth but then after that I'm going to put on my rapid lash to my eyelashes is that the right setup it's all worn because obviously I've used it um I like to put this on when I'm done with like pretty much everything else and actually getting into bed because 
want there to be less chance of like rubbing my eyes and stuff. Since you put this on your lashes, you certainly don't want to get this in your eyes or make a mess with it around your eye area. So the very last thing I use before I go lay down is this is a sample size. The full size is much bigger and I don't know how to pronounce this. La Neige? I don't know. I'll show you. I got this sample size from Sephora. I'm pretty sure it was one that you could like, you know, you could pick your samples from Sephora when you're checking out. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So this is a lip sleeping mask. It's just thick lip balm that I put on before I go to bed. I've used that much. So almost half of it. And it smells like bubble gum. Ooh, I really like the smell. It smells like gum. And I don't put my finger in there. Maybe you can tell. I don't, from that, I don't put my finger in there because I think that's disgusting. Um, I got these little sticks. They're pink, of course. They match, they have to be pink. I got these, like a whole pack of these off of Amazon. And so I use this in this pot every night to put this on my lips so I don't have to put my finger in there and germ the place up. Um, so I use this at night, every night before bed. My lips, when I wake up, it's definitely gone off my lips, but my lips don't feel dry in the morning at all. It's just like they're no longer coated in this stuff, so it's either absorbed or I've eaten all this off in my sleep or something, but um, so it doesn't leave like a crazy residue till the morning or something, but it does make my, keep my lips feeling nice until the morning. So um, I like that and I, I do plan to repurchase this in the full size as soon as this is empty. So that's a lot of talking for one evening and probably for one vlog. So anyway, um, I'm gonna finish getting ready for bed. We're in for another chilly day tomorrow. So I will be trying to keep warm, trying not to freeze and trying to keep my little kitty cats warm also. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching this vlog. I know it's just kind of random and I just show random stuff throughout my day, but this is what a typical day is like for me, minus maybe the terrible weather and going literally nowhere and not leaving the house. Um, but yeah, just thought I'd share and be fun to have a little snow day vlog. So thanks for hanging out and seeing all my random stuff and I will talk to you later. Bye.